I'd like to start off tonight with an update on the sound clip that opened our show last week. And for the apparently sizable percentage of our audience with bong-related memory deficiencies, that's the one where Wolf Blitzer made almost as much of an ass of himself as he did when he went on Jeopardy and proved himself to be biologically fungal in mental function. And if you somehow missed that clip on the YouTube, the Twitter, and the Facebook, the story goes like this. Man meets woman. Woman's holding a baby in front of a house recently destroyed by a tornado. Man is a salivating news whore, so he puts a camera in front of her. So here's this feeble-minded simpleton who managed to score, I shit you not, a negative $4,600 on the dumbed-down Jeopardy that they give to celebrities, and he's vamping for questions. So he asks this poor woman if she remembers to thank God. Now, I can't really blame Wolf Blitzer for assuming that the random Oklahoman he was talking to is Christian. You're going to win that bet a lot more often than you're going to lose it. I mean, it's not like answering what is Jerusalem when the clue was Jesus hailed from this town, but it's still a stupid thing to ask someone about whom you know nothing. But this is Wolf, which appendage do the pants go on again, Blitzer, so you expect shit like that. What you don't expect is what comes next. Instead of just looking at her shoes and muttering, yeah, well, I thank him, whatever, this woman very politely and somewhat timidly says, well, no, because I'm an atheist. And then Wolf laughs like retarded people getting pudding. The woman he was talking to at the time, now identified as one Rebecca Witzman, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing her name incorrectly there, doesn't have to self-identify as an atheist. She could have just shrugged this off, but she used the A word. She said on national TV, albeit a channel nobody watches, that no, she doesn't thank God because she doesn't believe in God. And if anybody had been watching, they might have looked at that and said, hey, there's a regular person with real problems and an adorable little baby, and she isn't religious, and she seems like a normal human. It's an important message to send. Keep in mind that normally there's no reward for saying, no, I'm an atheist. In fact, when you live in Oklahoma, there's very often something quite antipodal to a reward. But if she was doing it with any end goal in mind, it was probably a subtle reminder to Wolf and the other newscasters out there that they shouldn't just assume people are religious. It's a bit of a sacrifice to send a very important message. Now, Wolf Blitzer won't learn, of course, because he's so stupid that he doesn't even know he's too stupid to go on Jeopardy, but I'm willing to bet that a number of other newscasters were taking notes. Not Wolf, because it was rainy that day and his crayons don't work in the rain. And I'm sorry if it seems like I'm focusing too much on Wolf's mental impairments, but we're talking about a guy who once looked at a bowl of penne on a television screen and said, what is fettuccine? I mean, fettuccine, Wolf? Are you fucking kidding me? So anyway, I hear this silly little sound clip and I decide to open the show with it, and I wasn't the only one who thought it deserved to share. Because within 24 hours of the live broadcast, it was all over the atheist blogosphere, and all over the English-speaking world, atheists were giving Rebecca an enthusiastic little fist pump. But the story doesn't end there because that's not all we were giving her. Enter comedian and secular church co-founder Doug Stanhope, who sees this thing and realizes that this is a perfect time to show the world the benefit of putting your faith in the faithless. So he starts an Indiegogo campaign called Atheists Unite to raise money to help our latest viral celebrity rebuild. And it turns out that we atheists thought that was a fantastic idea. So thanks to the efforts of Stanhope, the inexplicable morality of non-believers, and the power of the atheist blogosphere, the secular community was able to raise over $50,000 for this woman in less than three quarters of a day, with more pouring in to help her and the other recently smited people in Oklahoma all the while. Now, originally, I was just going to tack this update onto the end of the headline section, but the more I thought about it, the more I realized that this story represents every single step between now and the secular majority. It begins with normal people standing up and proudly, if timidly, and politely proclaiming their atheism. It ends with secular humanism stepping in and serving those functions that we've left to churches for too long. Christians have a lot of places to go when the shit hits the fan. Within hours of the storm clouds clearing, there were religious missionaries there to help the religious people cope. And most of these people are just good people that want to help. They'd be happy to help the atheists too, but they're not equipped. They can only exacerbate the stress by talking about God's plan and asking us if we remember to thank Super Jesus. In researching for this show, I come across a lot of shit that makes me wonder if there's any point in fighting this fight. I see laws passed today that the 18th century would be embarrassed by. I see world leaders justifying their actions with Aesop's fables. I see people being killed by the hundreds for believing in the right imaginary friend the wrong way. And it makes me want to start a podcast about hockey or something. But once in a while, I come across a story like this, and it gives me hope. It reminds me that there's really some power in this community, even if we are a bunch of unheardable pussies. It reminds me that even our weird, nebulous, infrastructureless, leaderless movement can still get shit done. And it reminds me that Wolf Blitzer is verifiably $9,200 Jeopardy dollars stupider than Nancy fucking Grace. And I like being reminded of stuff like that.